Mr. President, I'm proud to stand once again with Senator Gillibrand in support of the Military Justice Improvement Act. Two years ago, Congress enacted a number of common sense reforms as part of the National Defense Authorization Act. These changes were mostly good, they were common sense, and I supported them. However, they were not sufficient. As I said at that time a year ago, we were past the point of tinkering with the current system and hoping that that does the trick. I urged the Senate at that time to support bold actions that would make sexual assault in the military a thing of the past. Unfortunately, those of us arguing for the Military Justice Improvement Act did not prevail. We were told to wait and see if the reforms that were included would work while leaving in place the current military justice system. Well, we've had time to see if things have really changed. They have not. The rate of sexual assault in the military is unchanged. 42% of service member survivors who reported retaliation were actually encouraged to drop the issue by their supervisor or someone else in the chain of command. That means a crime was committed and you shouldn't bother to report the crime. A majority of service member survivors indicated that they were not satisfied with the official actions taken against the alleged perpetrator. Three out of four survivors lack sufficient confidence in the military justice system to report the crime. Now, isn't that awful? If we didn't have confidence in the local police to report a crime, you would just know how high up the crime rate would go. Well, I suppose somebody's going to tell me that can't apply to the military, but it does. In fact, there has been a decrease in the percentage of survivors willing to make an unrestricted report of sexual assault. Two years ago, when military leaders were arguing against the reforms that Senator Gillibrand and I and others were advocating, Congress was provided with data from military sexual assault cases that we know now was very misleading. But those statistics and data, quite frankly, carry great weight with a lot of our colleagues here in the United States Senate. We were told at that time that the military commanders were taking cases that were quote unquote declined by civilian prosecutors. The implication was very clear as we were told that things will be all right. The military system results in prosecutions that civilian prosecutors turn down. An independent report by Protect Our Defenders and reported by the Associated Press shows that there was no evidence the military was taking cases that civilian prosecutors would not take. When Senator Gillibrand and I wrote to the President asking for an independent investigation of how this misleading information was allowed to be presented to Congress, guess what? We received a response from Secretary Carter, and that response said, you know, it was all a misunderstanding. The Secretary's response went into a semantic discussion of the meaning of certain terms. Apparently, in the military justice system, when a civilian prosecutor agrees to defer to the jurisdiction of the military to prosecute a case, it is listed as a quote-unquote declination. 
Such a situation is very different, very different from a civilian prosecutor refusing to prosecute a case. If the military asks the civilian prosecutor to defer to the military jurisdiction or it is done by mutual consent, it is not a case of a civilian prosecutor turning down prosecution. As I said, a review of the cases used to back up the Department of Defense claims last year found no evidence that civilian prosecutors had refused those same prosecutions. Nevertheless, that was a clear implication of the statistics supplied to the Congress by the Pentagon last year, and we were sucked into all that. The response to our letter, the response to our letter to President Obama claimed the authors of that review just didn't understand the meaning of the term decline as it is used in the military justice system. The reality is that the information the Pentagon provided to Congress was presented, obviously, in a very misleading way. So this question, when military leaders claimed the civilian prosecutors had declined to prosecute cases that the military then prosecuted, would it have had the same impact if they added a footnote saying that in this context, declined doesn't really mean declined? So to summarize, the reforms that we were told would reduce military sexual assaults haven't worked. And folks, a rape is a rape, and a rape is a crime, and it needs to be reported and needs to be prosecuted. And of course, the chief rationale for opposing our reform of the military justice system was based on a very misleading data that I hope I have made very, very clear. So, how many more lives need to be ruined before we're ready to take bold action? If a sexual assault isn't prosecuted, predators will remain in the military, and that results in a perception that sexual assault is actually tolerated in the military culture. That destroys morale, and it also destroys lives. The men and women who have volunteered to place their lives on the line deserve better. Taking prosecutions out of the hands of commanders and giving them to professional prosecutors who are independent of the chain of command will help ensure impartial justice for the men and women of our armed services. And that's what Senator Gillibrand and my amendment is all about. Let's not wait any longer. Let's not be sucked into certain arguments that we've been sucked into in the past. Let's stand up and change the culture of the military so that people are prosecuted when they do wrongdoing. Let's get it done and get it done on this reauthorization bill. I yield the 